What is the overlay network driver in Docker? And how does it power Docker Swarm and multi-host container networking? This video will try to answer that and more as simply as possible. This is the seventh video in the Docker networking series. Find links to the previous ones in the description below. If you are looking to learn more about the basics of Docker, I will recommend checking out the Docker Made Easy series. Here's the agenda for this video. We will discuss what is the overlay network driver, how to use it, when to use it, and what are some of its limitations. A couple of quick reminders. A Docker host is a physical or virtual machine that runs the Docker daemon. Docker network drivers enable us to easily use multiple types of networks for containers and they hide the complexity required for network implementations. So what is the overlay network driver? The overlay network driver creates a distributed network that can span multiple Docker hosts. Overlay networks were designed to be used with Docker Swarm services. Docker Swarm is a container orchestration tool like Kubernetes that allows us to manage multiple containers on multiple hosts. To deploy an application that is a Docker image on a Swarm, we create Swarm services which can run one or more containers from the image. They will make more sense when we actually try them out in a moment. When a Docker host initiates a swarm or joins an existing swarm cluster, two new networks are created. The default overlay network called Ingress, which handles the control and data traffic related to swarm services. And a virtual bridge network called Docker Gateway Bridge that connects overlay networks to the individual Docker daemon's physical network. Like custom bridge networks we saw in the last tutorial, custom or user-defined overlay networks can also be created using the docker network create command. We don't really need to understand the nitty-gritty details of these networks, but rather we should focus on how to actually use overlay drivers. So let us directly see overlay drivers in action. The full potential of overlay networks can be seen when we have multiple hosts and we will be using three hosts. The simplest solution is to use a virtual machine tool like VirtualBox or UTM on Mac. Since I am on a Mac with Apple Silicon, I will be using UTM and in particular I will be using this particular operating system image, Debian 10.4 minimal. I've already created three virtual machines named node 1, 2 and 3 respectively and I have connected my terminal to them, node 1, 2 and 3. For multiple machines to communicate together as a swarm using overlay, Docker requires the following ports to be open between the hosts. If you're running VMs locally, make sure the VMs can reach each other over the network. If you're running VMs on the cloud or in a strict network environment, make sure to update your firewall rules accordingly. Before moving forward, we need to ensure that we have connectivity between the hosts. So let's test it out with ping. From node 1, let's get its IP. So we can see it has an IP of 192.168.64.4 from node 2. Let's try to reach node 1, we can reach it and what about from node 3, we can reach node 1 as well. So I have already tested it out. We have full connectivity between the nodes. The next step is to install docker on all your hosts. I have already installed docker on them. You should follow the official documentation 
to get the actual instruction based on the operating system you are using. So as you can see I am using docker 20.10.18. Alright, now we are going to create the swarm and join the nodes. Let's initialize the swarm on node 1. So we do that by saying docker swarm in it. This will initialize the swarm and we can see which nodes are right now part of this swarm. Right now this is only node 1 as the leader. So when we initialized docker printed out the command we can use to join worker nodes. So on node 2 let us join this and node 3 let us also join the swarm cluster. Now if we run the same node list command you can see that we have the all three nodes as part of this swarm cluster. And we can also check that two new networks were created with the docker network ls command ingress of type overlay and docker gateway bridge. As we had learned previously, we need to create Swarm services to run containers using the Overlay network. Let us start off by creating a service named Who Am I? So, this particular command created a service named Who Am I using the containers Who Am I image. This image runs a tiny web server on port 80 and simply returns some operating system and HTTP information. This option is telling docker that port 8000 on the host will map to port 80 on the container. But on which host? Check which host the container is running on using the docker service, yes and the name of the service. So this particular container is running on node 1. How can we confirm that the ingress network is being used? Let us get the container ID and let us inspect the container. So if we come down under network settings and under networks, we can see a section named ingress confirming our hypothesis that indeed a swarm service is using the ingress network. Since the service has been published on port 8000, if we send a request with curl from node 1, let's say curl to the address of 1.700.0.0.1 to 8000, we can see the expected information to be printed by this particular container. Not surprising. But the cool thing is, if we try to run the same command on the other nodes, we can see that curl is also returning the result of this, even though there are no containers running on this node, and as well as on node 3. So why is this happening? All swarm nodes participate in an ingress routing mesh the routing mesh enables each of the node in the swarm to accept connection on the published ports for any service running in the swarm, even if there are no containers running on that node. This means whenever a docker swarm service publishes a port, that service is reachable on that port across all swarm nodes. The overlay network is responsible for routing traffic to the correct container on the correct node. But what if we have more than one containers? Let's find out. Running multiple containers of a service is pretty easy. We just say docker service scale name of the service and let's run three containers of the service. 
Docker is now preparing and it has already deployed the changes. We can now see with Docker service PS that indeed all three of the nodes have a container running in them. Docker Swarm is smart enough to distribute the container workload among the available nodes. If we now curl on any of the nodes, we should see that the results are not the same. The host names are different as well as the IPs. This is because containers running under the Swarm service on the wheel network are automatically load balanced. Awesome. Now, what if we want to attach a standalone container, not a Swarm service on the overlay network, for example to communicate across multiple nodes. If we try to run a particular container using the ingress network, Docker says we could not attach to ingress, permission denied. So the default ingress network does not allow standalone containers to be attached. For that, we can use user-defined overlay networks. The first step is to actually create the custom overlay network. So using the docker network create command, we are specifying the driver to be overlay. We are telling it that it can attach standalone containers and the name is my overlay. We can confirm that this particular network was created and this is of type overlay. Now if we try to run a particular standalone container using the overlay network, the custom overlay network, we should be able to run it. So we ran a container named app1 using the nginx alpine image and we can see it is running. Since app1 is running all by itself on the my overlay network, let's add another service. We are creating a swarm service named web using my overlay. We are specifying that it will have three replicas or three containers and it will use the nginx alpine image. We have not published any ports, but this image of nginx runs the nginx server on port 80 inside the container. Now, since app1 and web containers are using the same network, they should be able to communicate with each other. Let's try to reach web from app1. So, if we use the docker exec command to run curl web, we should be able to get the index.html page that is served by web containers. And we can simply curl web because the DNS name of the service is load balanced across the containers in that service. To test the other way around, Let's get the container ID of our web container. So this is a web container. And we will execute the same command on this particular container and we will curl app1. And this also seems to work because both of these containers are on the same network. Congratulations. Now you know how to use overlay networks. Of course, there is a lot more to it, but we have covered the essentials. Feel free to learn more from the official documentation, link in description below. Let us clean up our mess. Let's first remove F1. Let us then remove the services we have created.
we will then remove the custom network that we created. And finally, we will leave this one on the worker nodes. And finally, on the leader node, we will use the force option and we are done. So when should we use the overland root driver? You should consider using the overlay network driver if you have multiple nodes to deploy your containerized workloads. But you have a small team with limited containerization experience. Or if you need a simple container orchestrator like Docker Swarm, but do not have the time or the resources to invest into more complex orchestrators like Kubernetes. The limitations of the overlay network driver as follows. The overlay network driver is slower than host driver. If you need the highest network performance and your workload is running on a single host or you are okay with setting up the OS level routing by yourself, then the host driver would be more suitable than overlay. This is because the host driver directly uses the host's network instead of setting up separate interfaces and port mapping configurations. Another limitation of Docker Swarm is that it does not natively support auto-scaling. Now auto-scaling is not supported out of the box as you need to provision new infrastructure or servers, which is out of the scope of Docker. There are third-party tools or scripts that can help, but if you are really serious about auto-scaling, you should consider something like Kubernetes or AWS CCS. So in conclusion, we learned about the Oval Network Driver in Docker, what it is, how to use it, some possible use cases and limitations. By connecting multiple Docker daemons in a swarm, the Oval Network Driver simplifies multi-host networking. But its drawbacks are to be kept in mind especially when using it in production. I hope I could make things clearer for you, be it just by a tiny bit. In the next video, we will summarize what we learned in the Docker networking series. Thanks for making it so far. See you on the next one. But till then, be bold and keep learning. But most importantly, take care.